think that there are times that we forget where we really are at. I'd like to start off by reading a quote from the book, The Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> it was an age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. And I always mess up on that. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was a winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going the other way. That is where we are at the church, and that's where Jesus was at the time that he was heading towards Bethany. As he is heading there, I want you to understand what is going on. There are groups of people who are coming around Jesus. They are gathering on either side of him. One side, they wanted to make him the king of the Jews. And on the other side, they are meeting together, and they are talking about how to get rid of him and how to put him to death. As he's traveling along the way, there are those who are willing to accept him just as a prophet and some who see him as the Messiah. People are being divided in this direction and that direction. And folks, this is no different than where we are in this day and age right now. We are there. Jesus was going to Bethany. It was six days out from that fateful day when Jesus was going to commit the greatest act that this world has ever seen. He is going out there and he is looking for a place, a place of peace. He is heading towards the house of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. He so much wants to find a place where he is loved by people where he can go and he can let his hair down. He gets there and he finds out that they've all been invited to go out for supper. And so the stage is set to have the feast at Simon's house. I'd like you to take your uh, Bibles. I'd like you to turn to Luke. This, we're, we're going to go through a hall of the Gospels. So don't keep your finger in one place. We're going, this is one of those events that is recorded by all of the Gospels. Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 37 and 38. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, 
when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. And she stood at Jesus' feet behind him weeping, weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her hair and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed him with fragrant oil. Going to the other Gospels, we know that this is Mary of Bethany. Some will say that it's Mary of Magdala, maybe the same person. We can go and we can argue these things infinitum and try and figure out exactly what this is. But folks, this is Mary. Can we just leave it right there? This is Mary. Here she comes in. She has done something a little impetuous along the way. She has heard the words that Jesus has been saying. He's been telling everyone that he is going to, to die, that he is going to have to be sacrificed. She doesn't totally understand this, but she knows along this way that this is the one person who looked down into her soul and saw just exactly where she was at. She looked at him as one who had saved her from the mire where she was at. The story is, is that this woman was taken into sin. She was used to uh, being in the, the sinful act along the way. The devil had entered into her, and more than one time, more than one time, the master had to come and drive the devil out of her soul. How many times does the Lord have to come to your soul to deal with your devils and your demons? We all have them, don't we? I need to explain the fragrance that she picked up. It was what was used in the, in the funeral process at that time. You see, they didn't have the embalming methods that we have today. Where we take the body, we remove the fluids from out of the body, and we replace them with metals and things like this that keeps the body preserved so that it will look okay and it doesn't start stinking real quick. The sad thing, all of us have been around death, and we know what death is. Death stinks. Amen? Death stinks. cost of what she bought was a, was a year's wages. Could you afford to spend a year's wages? I don't want you to look at this as, in the type of thing of comparing yourself with her wages. This, this is not into what is going on. She was willingly, impulsively went out and bought for Jesus something that cost a whole year's wages in order to earn it. See, she's originally thinking in her mind that she's going to use this when Jesus dies and when she puts, when she's there with his body, she's going to anoint him with this, but as she is there, Holy Spirit moves upon our heart. She loves Jesus. Folks, how much do you love Jesus? Are you willing to love Jesus so much that you're willing to be embarrassed? She's trying to be unnoticed. She sneaks in at his feet. They, when they ate, they reclined. They didn't sit at the table like we did. And even if you're looking at the table and chair type of thing, being at the feet is still under the table, isn't it? This fragrance is, is put in an alabaster and it's sealed in there to keep all the fragrances in. You don't want to lose anything there, especially something that is that expensive. She tried to break it open. She tried to be quiet. She tried to do all the right things. But 
even with all the smell of the food and everything that's going on, this fragrance spreads throughout all the room. Take your Bibles and now turn to uh, John the 12th chapter. Because there's a response to what begins to happen. John chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrance, oil, not sold for 300 denarii, and given to the poor. You see, the problem that goes on is although we may have great type of motives and great type of things, all of us in this room, all of us are dirty, good for nothing, rotten sinners. We have all failed. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We have gotten along the way, and it is so easy along the way to start looking at the things that are going on around us and misconstrue what someone else is doing. It's easy to go out there. It is easy to say things along the way. We, we may not mean them. We may mean them in the type of way of straightening things up along the way, but we never think about what our words are being said sometimes. I want you to understand that deep down what was going on is that this disciple of Jesus Christ was still really stuck in that wallet that was there that he was carrying around. He was stuck that what was there. You see, what he was doing is he was making it look like that he was the good guy. He knew all the things. He had been questioning waste all along the way. He had been going out there and saying these things, and he had gotten the disciples to change what was going on. He had money in order to help at the time with the poor, but he was also dipping in there on the other hand and pulling the little extra out for himself along the way. All of us are sinners, folks. All of us have failed and fallen short of the glory of God. And sometimes we think that we are righteous in what we're saying when deep down what is going to happen, we don't realize that the words are going to have the effect. Fellow brothers and sisters, we have been dividing ourselves, whether it is based upon race, whether it is based upon where we come from, whether it's based upon the things we see. Amen. We've been doing the wrong things. Amen. All of us are sinners. And we fail to realize that our words sometimes have such impact. You see, it just didn't stop with what, what Judas was saying. Along the way, let's turn to Mark, because what begins to happen in Mark is we see what the processes are going on with all of the disciples. Because all the disciples are picking it up. Verses 4 and 5. But there were some who were indignant among themselves, and they said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, and they criticized her sharply. So easy for us to pick up along the way, to divide it into the type of things, to speak those type of things, and I want you to understand what is going on. Here is Mary. She had put herself out she has seen the Savior who has loved her so much. She has poured out that which was the greatest thing that she could give. And what is everyone doing? Everyone is putting it down as if it is the worst thing in the world. What a Right now, the world that is arguing and going over and talking about Christianity and those who believe in Christ, what a waste. 
The words that were spoken here were not just for Mary, not just to put her down. It was to put Jesus down also because here he is. The question is, what a waste. Do you realize what Jesus is about to pay for you, for I? Do you realize what the cost is? How many of you realize about what the cost is in order to come here, in order to, to be here, to be a part of this congregation? There is a cost that comes in here. Is it a waste? How often we say those words and flippantly we go out there and we put things down and, and we say things along the way. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verses 10 to 13. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my body. Assuredly, I say to you, whether Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told as a memorial for her. Amen. You know the sad thing that I see in this world? We wait to show our love. We wait to show our concern. So many times we boil things up, we make everything so public, we make everything so out in the open. And so little time do we spend it in sharing the great love that we have been given. How many times have I been in a funeral and it's at that time that people are coming up and trying to show their love. Folks, it's too late. It's too late. This should be the place we are loving one another where we come to the point where what we are doing is we are coming here in order to show how much God has loved us. I want you to get the picture. What has happened here is that driven this woman farther and farther down. And all of a sudden what is going now is Jesus is looking at her. And she sees a full view of love and comfort that is coming from Jesus Christ. Jesus loves us. It may be that the best that you can give is not maybe the best, and maybe it's considered a waste by others in this world. But I want to tell you, Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus wants all of you. Jesus wants all of your heart. Do not wait until the last minute, folks. Do not think along the way that this is the time to hold back. Amen. Jesus is waiting. We should be willing to be just like that woman and put it all out on the line. Let us go out there and, and put the fragrant oil before the Lord. What he wants is he wants all of your heart. Amen. It is time to put away the dissension. It is time to put away the problem. I'm going to tell you, what Jesus did on the cross is not a waste. Amen. As I look around this room, I 
I see the people that Jesus has died for. You are not a waste. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care what your sins are. I don't care if you're a liar. I don't care if you're a thief. I don't care if, if you're a homosexual, if you're a drunkard. I don't care along the way if you cheat on your spouse. I don't care what happens along the way. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to change you. Jesus wants to help you. Jesus wants you to be different. And the greatest problem that we have is so few of us look into the beautiful face of Jesus Christ. We are spending too much time in ourselves, drinking of ourselves instead of realizing this young lady put it all out on the line. Young people, I want to tell you something. I am heartened when I see you're here, and I cry when I see you leave from the church. Jesus loves you so much, and if we have failed as adults, shame on us. We are fighting the wrong bike, folks. We are fighting the wrong thing. We need to be coming to the feet of Jesus Christ. We should be willing to let down our hair, and all of us should be kissing the feet of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, I know for me one of the hardest things to do is to get down and bend down and rub my wife's feet. Amen. Come on, man. Isn't that the truth? Ladies, do I got an amen there? Yes, And if you're not willing to do it for her, gentlemen, you need to do the same thing as Jesus Christ. Because he loves you so much that he was willing to pay the ultimate price in order to save you. Shame on you if you go out there and you act as if you are a Christian and you have not looked at the face. I don't want to finish there. We'll go back to look. Because in Luke we have, we have the situation with the host. And we've got to deal with the host. He had a problem too because he is sitting there and he is hearing everything that's going on. Luke the 7th chapter, verse 39. And now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what man a woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. I need to go back in the story again. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Both Simon and Mary are from Bethany. I don't know how it happened. I don't know if it was innocent. I don't know what went on the other way. I don't. It seems a bit sinister, but apparently along the way, Simon had led Mary into the wrong type of relationships. Young ladies and gentlemen, in this church, we ask you to wait to have sexual relations until you're married. Amen. I do not believe that sex is sinful and evil as long as it's in God's order. Amen. But apparently, Simon let her down that path when Simon led her down that path, not only did she go there, she had the problem that many of us have. You see, the problem is, is when we commit one sin, we start thinking about ourselves, well, if I've committed this one sin, what's going to happen from here? Young men, the greatest problem I see today is that sexuality is so much all over the place, you can hardly get away from it on the internet. Young ladies, young men are not tra trained to treat you 
with the respect that they should treat you. Amen? And so he led her along the way, and she went down the path. And as she went down there, he left her along the way, and she was so disheartened by what happened, she thought that she was such a bad sinner that she continued along the path. And she continued to go into sin. And folks, if you are caught in any type of sin, this is the time for change right now. Do not go on any farther. Jesus Christ can help you with any of the sins that you may have. Jesus can change you. Jesus can stop you from going from the direction that you are going in. But you see, the problem was, is that Simon is just looking at Jesus as a prophet. There are many people in this world who only see Jesus as a prophet. Oh, he was a good man. Oh, he did all of these things. Other prophets healed people. Other prophets raised people from the dead. Jesus is okay. He could do those things. But Simon did not see Jesus as the same. I will tell you the price that your pastor has been paying over the past few months. The price I have been paying is that I have been getting down on my knees and bearing my soul before the great God of heaven. Mm -hmm. yes. And it is not a waste. Amen. And now I'm going to ask my congregation you know Jesus Christ not as just the prophet, but as the Savior. Jesus responds, even though Simon has been keeping him quiet, Jesus knows. Folks, you can't hide anything in your mind from Jesus Christ. Shame on you if you think you can. Simon, I have something to say to you. And so he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, they freely forgave, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them I love him? If you perceive in this church that you're a pretty good person and you have not given it all to Jesus Christ, you are in the same place as Simon was. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are here in this church and you are thinking that you are self-righteous. Thinking that you're okay, folks. And the perception is, you know what? You see, Mary understood what she owed the Lord. Do you know what you owe your Lord? Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 Now I'm calling for you. What about you? Did you notice what happened there? The next thing that Jesus did is Jesus looked at her again. Your sins are forgiven. sins are no worse than my sins. You see, the only time that we can be forgiven is when we don't realize that we are going out and hurting people, doing the wrong things. I'm 
going to let you in on something that I personally feel. I don't care whether you like me or don't like me. It doesn't make a difference to me. But what makes a difference to me is whether your heart belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. And we need to get to that point with each and every one of us in this church. My sins, your sins, are thrown into the deepest part of the ocean, never to be seen again. And until we can let them go and put them into the hands of Jesus Christ, your sins are There are three souls. There they are. It started off with the first soul. There's Mary. She has opened that gift. She has opened her heart. Every one of us here, you have a choice. Are you going to open your heart to Jesus Christ? Are you going to let him in? Are you going to, to put it away? Uh, folks, there are so many times. It starts with that type of action. We must get to the point where we are willing to do anything in order to act out and share what Jesus Christ has done for us. Yes. There is no price that is too great, folks. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm willing to continue to pay the price until the end of my life because it, it is worth it all. Amen. There are going to be some people who are going to say, it's a waste. We waste too much money on the church. We waste too much money on individuals. They're, they're still struggling with sins. They're Praise the Lord! I want this church to be a church full of sinners. It better be. <laughs> you know, the sad thing is, I want you to understand that as Judas is leaving that house that night, Jesus knows where he's going. Yeah. And it's so easy to go after that which we think is right. And I want to warn you, I don't want any of you to be like Jesus. Some of you may not believe this, but there's not a single one of you that I want to see lost from the of Jesus Christ. There's Simon. He's questioning Jesus. He doesn't quite see the type of thing. There are a lot of sanctimonious Christians that may be here, think that they got it. But you don't. You question Jesus. I want to tell you a story. For years, she was in the church. She was married to a man that Call her all sorts of ugly names. He threatened her one day with a knife. She went to church every day. And when she went to church, she prayed for her husband. And one day when he was in his drunkenness and he was holding that knife over his head, he saw his wife and began to get the picture. The Holy Spirit broke through the drunkenness that he had, and all of a sudden he began to see his wife as someone who was bringing Jesus Christ to him. And his heart was broken right there that day. That man came into the church and gave his heart to Jesus Christ and was baptized. And on that very day she left the church. How could, how could the church accept that sin? the way our Lord is. And many of you may be questioning, you think about how good you are and what your ideas and where you are. And like 
Simon, please get a picture of Jesus Christ. Look full in his face, folks. Because the thing is, Simon was trained. A saint, not because he was worth it, because he finally saw Jesus mm -hmm. in the Savior. Amen. And I began with Mary, and I'm going to end with Mary. Mary was forgiven. <laughs> Folks, I want you to put all your problems, your troubles, I want to put your, all your sins into the hands of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you. I thank you for bringing such a group. People from all across the world and all of us here today are sinners. Dear Father in heaven, I ask right now that you would forgive our sins. I pray that we would look at face of Jesus Christ. When we leave from here, dear Father, I pray that as we look at one another, we will not see sinners, but we will see one another as forgiven by Jesus.
the seven trials. Now, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.